This is a mock interview conducted by Forum IS Academy at New Delhi. The interview panel includes eminent academicians, retired bureaucrats, and other luminaries. The objective of program is to acquaint the candidate with the format and expectations of the personality test conducted by UPSC. startup. in gurgaon or so the office is in uh, the registered office is in shalimar bag uh, okay. we had our incubated office in the campus right now we are working from home so what does your startup promote sir so primarily we were making technologies to convert agricultural residues specifically paddy straw to biodegradable products like paper plates paper cups etc so a uh, kind of trying to provide an alternative to plastic ban and uh, to provide material uptake for paddy straw as an uh, in incentive to farmers to not burn so now this budget has the agriculture accelerator fund which is also for technology are you as a startup trying to get funds from there so the formalities of this ac accelerator fund is yet to be uh, decided uh, but yes uh, if there are certain things uh, which which will look beneficial for us then probably will apply so how effective has been been the plastic uh, industry for you so actually uh, the product which we make are uh, are an alternative to plastics uh -huh. so um it's like that uh, disposable items which right now are made from plastics we were trying to replace that using uh, paper based alternative so how durable how resilient is it to compared to pra uh, plastic it is it is good to use for around one hour use and it is biodegradable it is biodegradable okay so you don't market it so actually our work was more focused around the development of technology, technology. okay so we decide we tried to market that but uh, uh, we were I think that we were confused that we want to market the technology or we want to market the final product itself. No, but you could have given to somebody else to market it. No, if it is a good thing for future of India, because plastic is now creating havoc uh, in the entire country. Yes, sir. We had uh, we had got a patent for that also, uh, but in order to transfer that patent, uh, another set of a whole patent suit is required so that effective know-how transfer uh, would have been done. and apart from that many other loopholes in the technology was yet to be uh, covered up so you were also from patna bihar and you are optional in physics have you been to patna of late yes so patna the pollution levels are going up and up every year vehicle emission industrial emission so tomorrow if we post you as the dm of patna city what would you do to get this thing out or at least to contain the pollution in uh, patna city it has now reached alarming proportions sir uh, one of the primary reason of pollution in patna is because of the high population density and the ongoing infrastructural work so and the heavy uh, traffic as you pointed out so my first uh, priority would be to focus on public transport like uh, uh, the metro rail uh, construction is also going on but i'll also focus on improving the quality of buses and auto rickshaws uh, there probably uh, focus on electric vehicles uh, secondly sir uh, i'll also uh, focus on uh, because patna is a relatively smaller uh, city as compared to cities like delhi etc so uh, going to office by bicycles etc can also be promoted there and apart from that sir uh, in general local awareness is required uh, so that uh, in terms of other kind of pollution like uh, plastics etc are eliminated by the use of uh, um, biodegradable products like uh, we or other companies have started making what about the industrial pollution which is partly affecting patna's air pollution 
on the outskirts you have number of industries in patna so for industrial pollution uh, one thing we can do is to uh, promote the zero liquid discharge technology so that the ganga water is not polluted and apart from that uh, so the primary motive would be to develop uh, provide technologies like electrostatic precipitators so that air pollution is uh, minimized and overall a regulatory framework has to be strengthened probably by the use of uh, internet of things we can uh, will be able to get real time uh, monitoring of these kind of industries why are we not using a precipitator in uh, delhi any reason the intent is sir, uh, to use electric is it expensive uh, uh, the cost is one factor the cost is one factor and the second fact because uh, it does not add value to the final product so it adds to the cost so either it has to be compensated by uh, any kind of funding from government or uh, the company itself has to transfer the cost to the final customer and secondly i think that uh, most of the electrostatic precipitator technology the good quality uh, precipitators ha have to be imported so uh, probably uh, we should more focus on developing affordable technologies okay thank you ankur ankur yes sir. you're from bihar right yes sir what is this fiasco uh, that is you know that has happened in tamil nadu uh, something bihar is related fiasco what, what has happened in tamil nadu so there were uh, apprehensions that migrant laborers from bihar were uh, were facing some kind of violent activities in tamil nadu but recently it has been found that that was primarily because of some false news propaganda which was spread by uh, some adversaries within the society so basically these are self proclaimed journalists right youtubers how to curb them or should should them uh, should these youtubers be curbed or should there be any legislation to curb the rise of self proclaimed journalists sir uh, i think this whole uh, journalism on the uh, on uh, digital platform that requires i believe that uh, a complete ban or a legislation uh, to do that would not be com uh, very feasible because the any technology like digital technology uh, that depends on the modal compass of an individual how you are using that so firstly there should be in general public awareness uh, so that they are well empowered to gauge whether that particular news may be correct or not and secondly uh, i think that uh, probably we can use artificial intelligence technologies uh, or to in, uh, to gauge whether this kind of uh, false news is false or true or something like that so uh, legislation would be a would, would be a bona fide step but at this point of time there are many open ends which needs to be closed there any technological suggestion from your side for fact checking can you think of something sir uh, blockchain would be one thing uh, i believe because that uh, kind of makes sure that the true information is not altered within the whole uh, system which is the part of how will you do it on a, a, a video uh, uh, news so now if i have uploaded a video which has got fake news fake video how to check that in terms of video news sir this is a million dollar problem right now so i believe uh, we can integrate artificial intelligence based models so that i'm not sure how exactly the objectification of truth uh, will be done but if we are able to develop a ma mathematical model around that then probably uh, uh, it can be beneficial acha since you are uh, from startup ecosystem what happened in this uh, silicon valley bank so uh, as far as i know in that bank uh, was a regional bank which primarily uh, loaned to the startup companies and the number of uh, loan provided or... investments to startup companies so the deposits in that uh, uh, bank were around uh, 50 billion dollar the deposits were i think uh, more in in comparison to uh, the loans or the investments they were giving so in order to uh, match that they bought some government securities earlier but right now because uh, uh, repo rate has been increased the yield of securities has reduced and they had to sell in cheap uh, in order to satisfy the requirements of the depositors and unfortunately what was the demand of the depositors what demand they wanted to satisfy they wanted their cash in the account why why startup suddenly ask uh, started asking for cash by a year back they were investing now they want money back 
and why everybody wants their money back sir i think uh, first reason would be the geopolitical uncertainty is, uh, which we are having no that is not the reason uh, then probably what is called the funding winter it's a generic term uh, which we use to uh, say that in certain period of time the probability of getting funding is reduced why does it happen so in general uh, i think that the market spirits are down and uh, uh, there are fears of recession uh, secondly uh, if we are talking about this particular issue uh, because of the uh, covid induced uh, market boom uh, companies hired a lot a lot number of people but right now uh, that is not related to funding winter okay i'm sorry sir i'll i'll have to read. read about it thank you we'll get back to you this on this Thanks. Hello, Anko. Uh, so you work in a startup in the agriculture sector. Uh, can you tell me where exactly or what are the opportunities uh, for the startups in the agricultural uh, sector, whole supply chain, where all uh, you know there are lots of gaps in Indian agriculture. Where all uh, aspects where startups can step in and plug those gaps or solve those problems. so uh, starting from the seed part uh, there are many scope of improvement in quality of seeds probably biotechnology based startups can uh, okay one is so research based in seed or inputs farm inputs farm inputs second would be sir uh, in terms of uh, land based innovations there are many small and marginal farmers right now so either customized small farmers based farm mechanization could be promoted or we can use uh, uh, some kind of business model innovation so that farm pooling can be done uh, okay in terms of so you are saying here uh, for example lending farm equipment and uh, lending farm equipment or probably uh, converting them into a farmer producer organization okay okay good that's good other thirdly i believe uh, that uh, we should work uh, by promoting the food processing industries so startups can take startups can uh, install decentralized smaller units like for example if you have haldi then you can haldi uh, processing seeds etc these kind of okay things. how about supply chain aspect uh, especially in your region like bihar where uh, where we we feel that you know fci is not very active or procurement government procurement is very low how can startup address the gap there so in terms of supply chain i think uh, first would be that recently the national waterways one has started so it provides direct connectivity from patna to kolkata and bihar is one of the highest producers of horticulture and fruits so probably it can uh, be a good potential to export these kind of perishable items uh, secondly in terms of uh, the lo- strengthening the local supply chains the cold storage network can be something which can be worked on okay uh, in the budget there was a term called uh, angel tax this year uh, what is uh, angel tax so angel investor uh, is a person who invest in early stage startups and uh, that kind of investment is shown as an as a profit in, in the balance sheet of in the income statement of startup and because it is a profit then uh, if it falls under a certain tax slab it has to provide a tax and that tax is angel tax and what is difference between angel investor and venture capital venture capital is more institutionalized form of funding angel investor is uh, probably an individual uh, in general so do angel investors also have a say in operations if they if they invest that depends on the kind of agreement the startup and the angel investor do they generally have. do they generally uh, intervene or is it up to the founders sir uh, let's say for example in a early stage startup if the if the stake of the investor if the angel investor is high then uh, probably he'll um, Like but do venture capital venture capital necessarily have a say? So in my experience, uh, any kind of funding scenario, there is no necessarily uh, as such. Okay, okay. Uh, so you are from Bihar. Tell me, what is your opinion regarding prohibition? Sir, I think that the intent of prohibition is bona fide, uh, so as to uh, like conserve the disposable income in the uh, lower households and do some useful work. however implementation uh, is something which needs to be worked on 
Okay, so you are in favor. Uh, prohibition should be there, but implementation should be improved. I believe that more regulation should be there instead of a blanket ban because... Okay, so you are not in favor of prohibition. Yes, sir, I am not in favor of prohibition. Uh, I will be in favor, I will be in favor of regulation in terms of like earlier there were like village, village scale decentralization of uh, liquor shops. Then probably we can reduce the extent of decentralization uh, we are having. Decentralization in what sense? I didn't uh, understand. The government that. authorized liquor shops. Earlier okay. uh, there were village level, block level uh, liquor shops which were readily available. Probably we can uh, reduce it up to a district level uh, model or uh, maybe we can uh, set up some quality certification unit uh, for local liquor which is generated. But I believe it is a more social problem and it will take time. So both top down and bottom up approach is required. Okay, you were saying that business should be tightly regulated but there shouldn't be a ban on it or probably higher taxes to discourage people from uh, uh, you know, there were huge tragedies and, uh, you know, uh, and there was controversy regarding, uh, you know, uh, to provide compensation to the kin of the diseased. Uh, what is your opinion? Should the government provide uh, uh, compensation in such tragedies? Sir, uh, I think that the, because the main rationale of the prohibition was to, uh, was to improve the condition of uh, lower households. So I believe that a comp a due compensation should be provided. Compensation should be provided, but the counter argument that the government, uh, many government officials gave that uh, it is not government's responsibility. They were the drinking illegal liquor, and they they ultimately paid the price. So why should government compensate here? So I think that uh, it was the onus of the government to make sure that uh, such kind of illegal activities are not happening there. And because it's a malfunction on the administration side, I believe it is a moral compulsion of the government also. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. I'll pass on to them. So, Anko, yes, you sir. come from Patna. Yes, Do you know from where the word Patna comes? Patna comes from the word Patthan, that means a Bandarga. Bandarga? Uh, uh, the port. Port for what? How Patna could be a port? Uh, it was a prominent port to connect uh, to Kolkata. So, Riverine port? Riverine port. Okay. Could you tell us the definition of a startup as per the DPIIT? So a startup is a company uh, which is less than equal to 10 years of incorporation and uh, has not crossed 100 crores of turnover within its any of the financial year and is probably doing some kind of innovative work. Is it done or there are more parameters? No, so these, these are the three parameters. There are more parameters to it. I'll check. Sir. Check it. Can, could you tell us the name of incubators which are located in Patna? IIT Patna has an incubator. Apart government, apart from that? That is a college based in yes. start incubator. Government based uh, incubator in Bihar, I'll have to check, sir. Okay. So, is your company making profit at present times? No, have sir. you ever taken funding? Yes. At what level funding? So, we have raised different kind of funding in the form of grant, equity and uh, debt also. Okay. You see, you see in present times, it is being said that India is witnessing a bubble in a startup ecosystem where startups are fudging their data, manipulating their data to bring more and more investments. And it is being said that one day this bubble will burst. Do you agree? So I think that uh, the, the construct that Indian startup is a bubble uh, would not be right because a bubble is something which is short lived. But Indian startup is a systemic uh, revolution. However, there are instances where people are uh, manipulating data so as to increase their revenue and show higher valuation. So, uh, so I believe that in general, uh, as we earlier discussed, if we are shifting focus from uh, just the service sector to agriculture and the manufacturing sector in startups also, then uh, more long value based uh, work should be done instead of a uh, valuation based work. And probably But you see sometimes bubbles cannot be short lived. If you remember global financial crisis, the bubble was building and building and building for years and years. Yes. Okay, moving ahead. You tell us the reason why we, in India we are witnessing boom in service based startups and not manufacturing based startups. Sir, uh, firstly in service based startup, the iteration time uh, as in going from one going from one form of product to different form of product on the basis of customer data is very easy. You can uh, sit in a room on your laptop and uh, work around on your project. But in terms of manufacturing, this iteration time depends on a lot of factors. 
you need higher funds you, uh, you depend you are dependent on external factors suppliers manufacturers etc and because of instability in the supply chain right now uh, that is one of the major problem and secondly sir uh, the getting revenue in terms of in service sector is relatively easier when it compared to getting uh, revenue man in manufacturing because you can employ the minimum viable product easily in service sector in, in comparison to manufacturing there are higher tooling cost in manufacturing as compared to service sector okay last question you see the issue of naxalism in bihar has reduced to a very great extent but it still persists in the state of jharkhand so tell us something in brief how naxalism in bihar was different from that of jharkhand and what the steps has the government taken in the state of bihar sir uh, naxalism or left wing extremism is primarily because of uh, the disconnect uh, of the communities from the mainstream economy and uh, in bihar uh, recently uh, it has shown a growth rate of 10.98% so that is one of the highest in the country and uh, it, uh, because of the remote infrastructural connectivity uh, by har ghar bijli yojana har ghar jal yojana such kind of uh, how naxalism was different from that of jharkhand and bihar when they were evolving how the naxalism was different in the two states which were the communities so i am not sure of the exact difference between the two communities uh, between the uh, bihar and jharkhand how many districts are there in bihar which are still infested with naxal so the exact number i'll have to i'll have to check thank you sir